Jersey crossovers are in, and here we have two mid-sized selections that are designed for both family life and taking the rougher path once in a while. Today we're comparing the 2023 Subaru Outback Premier XT and the 2023 Mazda CX-50 Meridian Edition. I call CX-50. Should we go for a drive? Let's go. All right. Okay, Renita, so what we have here are two family-oriented mid-size crossovers with not fully off-road capability, but outdoorsy capability, where you would take them up a, a cottage driveway or a road that's not in the best shape uh, and expect to be able to get where you need to go. So, I am driving the Mazda CX-50 Meridian Edition, which um, adds um, a, a little bit more outdoorsy capability to a, a crossover that Mazda is already positioning as being outdoor oriented in the CX-50, which is longer and lower and wider than the CX-5 that's been part of its line, lineup for a long time. Um, but And that gives more access to the roof for, you know, bundling up outdoor gear or luggage or that sort of thing. So I am in the Subaru Outback right now and this is the top premier xt trim it's a bit roomier in the back than in the mazda cx50 but it was a tough choice between the two of these like it really came down to some little things the outback of course has been outdoor oriented for a long time with those standard great big roof rails and lots of suspension travel ground clearance that sort of thing let's start to dig into the performance figures because i think when you're looking at vehicles like this that's where people are going to focus their attention here in the CX-50, we have Mazda's turbo engine, 2.5 liter turbo, which has 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque, and that's with 87 octane fuel. Mazda also provides uh, slightly higher figures if you want to put premium fuel into this, um, and it's one of the rare uh, OEMs that actually does let you know when there's a big difference in performance in that regard. I think most people are going to put 87 in, so that's why we've provided um, the lower figures. So six-speed automatic transmission in this and um, standard all-wheel drive. In the Outback, we have the 2.4 liter turbo horizontally opposed boxer um, engine as Subaru likes to do. The Outback XT models get the upgraded engine. Uh, CVT with that, as well as, as is the case with most Subarus, the standard all-wheel drive. I find um, the drive feel from the powertrain in the Mazda is still not exactly what I would call super refined, but I find it more refined than the Outback. Um, I think mostly in, due to the CVT. I find the CVT is um, kind of drony, not um, especially great at, at uh, picking up power um, at lower speeds and through acceleration. The Mazda's transmission um, is still a six-speed. Um, I'm sure Mazda's working on um, <laughs> some new gear gearboxes because a six-speed automatic is um, starting to feel a little dated in, the, in today's automotive world where you can get into more gears, get better low-end acceleration um, and uh, better fuel economy as well. But uh, I, I think I for prefer it overall versus the Subaru setup. What do you think, Renita? I actually feel a little bit the opposite. I think the Subaru, the drive was a little bit more smooth for me. Um, in the Mazda, I just found that the steering in this one was so tight. It's weird because I was expecting it to feel similar to the uh, Mazda CX-50 that I drove all summer, which was one trim down below the Meridian Edition, and that was a lot smoother. Uh, drive feel, I would have put that above the Subaru Outback, but I don't know, between these two, I'm kind of, I prefer the Outback. We should quickly touch on fuel economy as well, and in these two vehicles, neither of them is, is excellent, but then again, um, I'm not sure that that's something that's going to be an enormous factor for people shopping between these two vehicles or in sort of the outdoorsy end of this segment. Um, however, it's you know, not excellent, but largely on par um, for the viewers at home. We'll put the numbers on the screen for you down below, but um, not an enormous difference in terms of uh, what people would be considering when they're comparing these two vehicles. I'm going to talk about the suspension yeah. in these vehicles and why I think um, if we were waiting more on that outdoorsiness in this comparison, um, then I think that the Outback would blow the CX-50 out of the water. So. Both vehicles have McPherson strut front suspension. However, the Outback, in addition to its 22 centimeters of ground clearance, which is only slightly more than the CX-50, I'll give the CX-50 credit for that. I think it lands at around 21 and a half centimeters in the Meridian edition. In the Outback, the rear suspension is double wishbone, 
giving it a fully independent suspension on all four wheels. The CX-50 is positioned as an outdoor vehicle, and yet it's got a torsion beam rear suspension. Now, if you're just driving it on the road, that's not the end of the world. Mazda makes decent torsion beam suspensions, and they're in a lot of things, the CX-30, um, the Mazda 3, and on the road, it doesn't affect the drive feel too much. But if I'm in a situation where I'm off the beaten track and I want some, I might find myself in a situation where I want more articulation on the rear suspension, the CX-50 is, I'm sure Mazda could show me how it performs just fine, but the CX-50 setup doesn't give me the confidence that I'm gonna be able to get through some more challenging situations that the Outback does. However, this is going to be a more on-road and, and family-oriented comparison, and so we're not waiting that quite as much in this con the consideration here as we are um, other factors. Let's talk about the interior space in the Outback because it's a bit bigger than the CX-50 in almost every dimension. I think there's more rear legroom in the CX-50, but every everything else, headroom, uh, hip room on both rows, um, it, it's roomier in the Outback and that has a lot to do with the body style. Yeah, and that extra legroom for me currently doesn't really matter because all the people in the back row for me have short legs anyway. What about other family usability, Redina? What did you find when you were putting your three kids into these two vehicles? To be honest, they're almost similar. Like they've got, you know, the wider set back. So it's easier to get them in to a smaller, you know, sedan or even a smaller CRV. It was easier to fit the three car seats back there. We spent some time in the CX-50 over the summer and had no issues getting them in and out. Um, but it was the same thing in the Outback. Like in that sense, I wouldn't necessarily pick one or the other. Same with cargo space. They've both got a lot of usable space. I do love like the hatchbacky back, if that makes sense. That <laughs> like the wide back area to throw in a bunch of stuff or use it as say a table or possibly a change table, whatever you have to do. I think one of the things that sets the Outback apart is it's more wagon-like proportions. It's still upright, it's still tall with uh, with lots of ground clearance, but because it's more wagon shaped overall, it does have more cargo space and more usable cargo space. And so that becomes a factor as well. We should mention though, while we're talking about cargo, that in the Apex version of the CX-50, which is not what we're driving here, which is also available, and that adds on um, even more cargo capability in the uh, the upgraded roof rails and um, the, the platform on the top that uh, gives you access not only to loading more cargo on the top but there's some some CX-50 uh, accessories like a rooftop tent and that sort of thing um, that expand its outdoor capability so um, there is the, that aspect of it which really just puts it I think on an equivalent to what the Outback can do and then the Outback though has the additional space on the inside to work with. How about day-to-day -day usability in these two vehicles, Renita? Let's talk about um, infotainment and, and ergonomics and that sort of thing. What do you find? So when we got into the CX-50 at first, the, that dial in the center is a little off-putting. It's hard to get used to, but I will say after spending some time in the CX-50 over the summer, it got easier. And it was nice that even when we got back into it this time, you didn't really lose any of it. It's hard at first, but you, you do get used to it. And Mazda said that it was intentional. They don't want you to use the screen as a touch screen because they want you to keep your focus on the drive. So, I mean, in that sense, I can understand it, but it is difficult to get used to. And there is the option in the CX-50 to use the touch screen if you're in Apple CarPlay, which I assume most people would be anyway. Mm -hmm. The only down part about that is that it's hard to reach because it was not meant for you to reach. Uh, over here in the Outback, there's that huge uh, vertical portrait screen. Um, I'm not a huge fan, but it is easier to use in my opinion. Um, I just am not a fan of the way that it's laid out. Not only on the usability, but there's, a, there's another downside in the Outback, which is that rear view camera. I, and Subaru knows this is a problem because they upgraded it in the Ascent that we just did our first drive of recently. But in the Outback, it's still a low resolution, not very much visibility um, at all in that camera. And uh, I assume that we'll see an upgrade to that from Subaru at some point. But if you're buying the 2023, you're living with the low resolution rear view camera for now. It has only that one view of the back where a lot of the newer cars give you a couple different views. And I think if they did have the option for a second view, when you go into reverse, then you'd at least be able to use that bottom half of the screen that currently just goes blank when you put it into reverse. You might be able to get, you know, your two views right there instead of having to click around. 
And just as we wrap up, we can talk about design um, because it matters to people what a car looks like in their driveway and when they're sitting in it all day or for a big portion of their of their day driving around. So um, in terms of the exterior, personally, I prefer the CX-50 quite a bit. Um, I like the, the design changes that they've done versus the CX-5 in making it sort of lower and leaner and, and bulkier looking. Um, but keeping a lot of that Mazda design um, trait in as part of it. I wouldn't say I look at this car, even in its Meridian edition um, necessarily, with things like the um, all-terrain tires and, and that sort of thing. I, I still don't look at it and go, oh, that's definitely a car I'd expect to see, you know, in a, in a campground or something like that. But um, I do think that it, it it's a good balance between looking the part and looking like something I'd expect a suburban family to want to have parked in front of their house. I do also like the changes from the Outback's refresh, uh, particularly in the grill. I think it, the, the updated grill looks quite nice. Um, on the Premier XT, it's largely blacked out, which is a good look. Um, but it's still, you know, it's a Subaru. And if you're buying a Subaru, you know what you're getting in that regard. Um, but it's, I, I wouldn't say that fashion forward is something that the Subaru brand is, is uh, particularly known for. Same goes with the interiors, right? The interior in the, out, the Outback is very functional. Um, is it a mid forties kind of premium feeling interior? Not so much. In the CX-50, I like where Mazda was going with the design. Um, I'm kind of surprised the materials aren't a little bit more premium feeling, especially here on the dashboard where um, this feels like a like a quite plasticky um, upholstery as opposed to some of the more premium things that we see in other Mazda vehicles. The sort of stitching that's meant to match the look of a hiking boot is kind of a cool thing and it, this one is in an interior color um, terracotta which is exclusive to the Meridian edition uh, which I really quite like versus the other colors that I've seen in the CX-50. You know I had a feeling that you would say that you like the CX-50's exterior better because we generally disagree on things like that. I like the Outback a little bit better. I like that it looks a little more like a wagon and or like a station wagon and less like you know typical SUV but yeah interior I fully agree with you the I mean the insides of the Subaru look simple but like you said you know what you're getting when you go with Subaru okay I think we've talked through the important talking points are we ready to go back and make a decision I think so let's head back This is a tough one and for me it really did go right down to the wire and it really depends on what your intent is with the vehicle that you're choosing. For me, if I was going to spend more time off-road or doing more outdoorsy things, I would go with the Outback for its roomier interior and more capable suspension. But today we're assessing for on-road capability and drivability and in that context, I'm gonna take the CX-50. I find the interior is more refined, the infotainment is more usable and it's just overall a more well-rounded vehicle. For me, it's gonna be the Subaru Outback. You know, I did like the CX-50 when I drove it over the summer, but it wasn't the Meridian Edition. It was the one trimmed down. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, yeah, it's gonna be the Subaru Outback. You're right, it is roomier on the inside. And I found the infotainment to be not that bad. Not a huge fan of the large screen, but it works. For driving.ca, I'm Renita Narain. And I'm Stephanie Wallcraft. For more comparison tests and other reviews, hit the button below to subscribe or follow us on social media.